N6TLU here to share with you a problem that I encountered with my Johnson Ranger 2. I had it on the air, everything was fine. All of a sudden, I noticed on my receiver I had this huge carrier I actually just pegged the needle on my NC300. And there's kind of a funny, kind of a snapping, kind of popping audio. I thought, man, somebody's got a really powerful carrier. Well, it didn't turn out that the carrier was from a station, it was actually from a Ranger. So um, let me explain here what happened, and I'm sure you'll find this interesting, and hopefully you can uh, prevent this from happening to your Ranger. Well, initially, I thought the fault was probably just a tube. Tube shorted out, keyer malfunctioned, something of that sort. But I found that it wouldn't, uh, the problem wouldn't go away unless I took my crystal VFO switch and put it into unused crystal position. And then when I'd return to either VFO or zero, my meter would just peg right out. And uh, that kind of got me wondering. And as I'm goofing around with it, smoke started pouring out of top of the radio. I thought, man, th this is not good at all. So let me show you what I found. All right, well, to make it easy, of course, I've already got the Ranger tore down. And I inspected everywhere. I couldn't find out where that smoke came from. I thought maybe under the keyer platform, since obviously it looks like the keyer is not working anymore, right? Oh no, it wasn't that easy. Pop the uh, cover off the VFO, and I noticed there's a little smoke trail here. And I smelled it. Sure enough, it smells like baked electronics. Well, unfortunately, the problem turns out there's a resistor buried way in here. Okay, you can't even barely see it. And it's R5, 470 ohm resistor. That jobber is french fried. It's cracked, big black line down the center of it. I'm going to have a lot of fun replacing that. All right, so at this point, I thought, well, I better check those tubes. So I checked the keyer tube. It's fine. The little bias rectifier tube up there, fine. But huh, got into the VFO, which the smoke poured out of, the uh, OA2 shorted. Big orange plume coming out of the side of her. And I put it on my tube checker, sure enough, blew the breaker. I thought, ah, that must be it, right? Shorted the voltage regulator, burned out the resistor. Makes sense. Oh no. Then I checked the 6CL6 tubes. This one right here, flat, dead. I thought, wow. So maybe that went out and caused the other components to go out. So I replaced it, and when I powered it up, nope, she still pegged out, and this thing started going into super warp drive mode. So I thought, uh-oh, something's really wrong. So uh, pending much investigation, going through my schematic here, going nuts, having a couple glasses of wine, sitting back and thinking it over, I got the bright idea to check the grid voltage on V3, the 6CL6. It's supposed to be about negative 1.75 volts. It was 300. It's like, what the heck? Where'd that come from? So I got uh, searching around. Sure enough, shorted capacitor. One of those little uh, famous chiclet caps, right? The little mica guys. You hear about the uh, creeping uh, mica in there, the silver mica creeping? Well, shorted. This is a C22, a 300 puff cap. Happens to go between the oscillator tube and the grid of the 6CL6. Shorted out, kablammy. That caused the whole problem, okay? I'm gonna show you where this cap is, and I suggest if you ain't got nothing better to do someday, you gotta swap this thing out before this happens to your Ranger. All right, so C22 sits on this terminal board here. This is actually uh, the coupling cap between the oscillator tube and the VFO and the grid of that 6CL6. I replaced it with a thousand volt cap. You can get these through Mauser Electronics, a couple bucks a piece. Probably the best investment that you can ever make for your Ranger. So after uh, swapping that out, fired the Ranger up, problem's gone. Works like a champ again. Now my only problem is I have to totally rip this thing apart, pull the face off, Get the VFO compartment off so I can get in there and change that stupid nickel resistor. So that is going to take me hours. Alright, so once again the resistor 
I know you probably can't see it, but he's all the way behind this terminal board, sitting right about there. I can touch it, but there's just no way to get in here. It's right next to the 18K resistor, the one they call the Chernobyl resistor, okay? So unfortunately, I got it coming to it from the front. So this cage has to get out of my way. Next step is tear the face off the Ranger. All right, so the face is finally removed. That was a joy. The resistor, the rafter, is right in here. So if I zoom in, you might be able to see it. Hit a little light on the situation. There he is. Mr. Fried 470 R5. All right, we have a uh, successful replacement. There's the new 470 in place. The other one, which I know it's kind of hard to see, but it actually came out in pieces. It was really French fried. Well, that was a success. I guess you could call it that. It's actually a real pain in the old keister, okay? But new parts in there, everything's looking good. We'll put it back together, and next, we'll put the Ranger back on the air, see how she does. Well, after about two hours, of uh, disassembly and reassembly to change out that five minute resistor, we have a success. The oscillator is working like it should. So you see it come up and shut off. It wouldn't do that before, it just stayed on all the time. Okay, and we go over here to plate. We're talking. There's my plate, there's my modulation. She's doing a good job. Next step, get her back on the air. Hope this uh, video was informative. If you need any assistance, give me a ringer, shoot me an email. I'm on QRZ.com under N6 TLU 73s.